All right, welcome back. Today we are talking about something very simple as well, and it's close to my heart. I've always wondered, when we were growing up, most of our parents, I don't say, I'm not saying everyone, please quote me right, most of our parents never involved us in the business growing up. And I thought maybe it could have made a difference. With my friend Albert Nga again, I want us to talk about the Indian business world. I called it that myself because I have been trying to research about it. I have worked for an Indian before. And with all due respect, I've worked for an Indian before. And I was working with a little child of about seven years. And this child could count money, could do everything the father was doing. Instead, I was actually learning from, from the, the young child. child. Yes. So I asked myself, why is it so difficult that in our African setting, we are not involving our children in our businesses. We are just starting right now, yet it could be a spring web or a springboard for all of us to grow up and create that generational wealth. Um, the other day we were chatting and I told you, think about what you want to achieve 10 years from now Yes. and start doing it now. And you're spot on, you said, I'm already doing it. I think the, biz the challenge we have with uh, growing businesses is we are so short term. We look at the business for only today. We don't say 10 years from now. I have two examples or maybe three. When I started my shop, uh, one of the little shops that I'm running, I went to an Indian's, well, he's, he's Uganda born and everything, but he's Indian origin. Yes. I went to Vicky and somebody introduced me to him and said, this is my brother. He's starting a business here in town. And I think I had an equivalent of $1,000 in Uganda shillings. That's about 3.6 About 3.65 million. So I went in and started on my picking list. This, that, 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 that. And by the time we finished picking on the list I had, remember he was giving me things that I would say, can I take half a dozen of this? And he would say, no, 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 this one moves, take a dozen. And I would think, okay, this guy is good, but why am I going to get the money to pay him from. So I picked things and at the end of the day, I was over $2,000. I was just about eight point something million. And I told him, I'm sorry, I have less than money. So we're going to pick out the things equivalent to the cash I have. And then I'll come back in a few days and continue picking the rest. things. And he told me, no, 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 I know your address. They have told me your son so's brother. So take the things, you'll come back and pay. You can imagine the amount of commitment I had I trust. right away in that gentleman to make sure I don't disappoint. That was one. So for me, the commitment not to disappoint was key. I had to go and do whatever it takes and so make sure the money back. I make, I can pay back. I've been running it and then I met another Indian gentleman, Raj. Raj came to my shop and bought what I would come to the station, fuel his car, buy water and, and drive. Yeah. So he approached me and said, I can give you a good deal on drinks. And I said, oh really? He said, yes. He gave me the number and said, go there to tell them the Raj has sent me and they'll give you a good offer. I started buying most of the drinks. They had drinks from his shop. I'll tell you that as I talk, I can pick any amount of drinks for any amount of money. Because you have built the trust. Because I've built the trust. Between, yes. So I think for us, the challenge we have is that we do not forecast and say 10 years from now where do I want to be with this business I'm involved in many businesses and one of the business I'm involved in is packaging yes food packaging so we have a factory in Bushenyi we pack juice and honey and the MD who is uh, more or less my brother has run the business in such a way that the children can actually run the show Jonathan is going to senior too Rodney has finished P7, Apple and Albert have also finished P7. If he's not there and he's in Kampala they will for run a week, the business. they will run the business. Why is it so difficult? Or why are we starting it now? Because our, I'm telling you the fact, you know my dad, yes. before he passed, yes. he was a rich man. Yes. I was never involved in anything that he was doing. I'm actually hustling on my own to make it. Had I had that opportunity, would I have had a starting point? That's for sure. I think the myth is that uh, our parents wanted us so much into education. They thought if I expose them to making money, the kid won't go back to school. Yes. Which is completely wrong because you need to show them that by making money, 
when they have education, they'll even make it better than you're doing it. So these kids are going back to school. I mean, they're reporting to school next week. Mm. And the factory will still run without them, but at least they have the foundation sure. for running this business. And I think that's what happens with, with, with the Indians. I exposed my kids into my shop for festive. My acting last born, who is only eight now, was so hyper. But she had one thing that she would keep on saying, mm -hmm. Daddy, you're going to pay me for working here. Yes. And I was happy to pay her. Good. But she was involved in serving customers and somebody might, might want to call it um, child labor. No, it wasn't child no, labor. No, but I think... It was exposure. Exposure, yes, but also she will know the value of money exactly. at a young age. Exactly. And I think that's the other thing that we don't teach as African yeah. parents. I know that some people go with their children in supermarkets and the kids throw tantrums that they want this toy, I want that. If you've taught your kids right from the start, the serving culture of how to make money, when they get to the shop, I go with my kids to the shops yes. and I tell them, we'll pick this and this and this. If you want the other one, you're back. You have to pay for yeah, it. Yeah, you have to pay for it. And they have, they always cooperative. They, they don't have a problem with saying that, you know, I want this, you must buy it for me, I'm going to cry through tantrums. They don't do that because, because they, they know money is earned. They know the value of money. And that's one thing that I want us to take into this year and the years to come. As parents, you can tell the parents, how, how should we start involving our children in the work that we do? Does your child know that he actually wake up in the morning and go to work somewhere to make money that buys him food? Do they actually know that or they think, oh, if I want yogurt, I'll get it ask, it's yeah, here. Yeah. It will be there unavailable. Do they know that you actually earn it? What would you tell parents and children in this? I think to fellow parents, there's not an age where you should start exposing your child to money. Yeah. It's a language that they are going to interface as they grow up and therefore right from the onset, teach them the value of money, let them appreciate money, let them learn to save, let them have piggy banks, open the piggy bank, get a ceremony to open the piggy bank and let them know how much money they have. Go with them to the bank, let them feel the sleep, let them have this money banked into their account so they know that this, this money will help me for their rainy day or will help me when I want to buy something that daddy or mommy may not be able to buy for me. But also expose them to what they do. I love the companies that have, uh, I think, parent-child uh, office day where the kids actually come in, sit in their dad's or mom's seats and actually play around, you know, know what they do. I think I saw um, a clip the other day when Uhuru hosted, um, my apologies, President Uhuru hosted um, a, a bunch of children who were leaders in their schools and the one who was, say, head boy, would sit in the president's seat. Yes. And you know, see how it feels. There are those small things that we do to our children that imprint something on their mind, which they look up to. So expose the children, let them know what you do, let them know how you do it. Small steps will take them to longer journeys. Wow. I've always wanted to talk about this. I admire the Indian culture. That's me. I admire... There's so many things that I've said about Indians, but I have that admiration for them, for the business web they created. And I call that because it's a web. It captures everything around the family and, and the cohesion they have. And if as parents we can take that and put it in our children's mind, your child should know what you do, how you do it, so when you're not there tomorrow, because we don't know about tomorrow, yes. your legacy should never die. Thank you for watching. If you have not subscribed, please do because as I told you earlier, it's going to be amazing. Growth and accountability is all we do on this channel. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.